All right. So today we're going to look at solving exponentials. So the other kind of things, um, getting our base, and then we're going to practice a lot tomorrow and Friday to make sure we have it all down heading into our test week of next week. So let's take a look at this. So kind of a warm up here. If you are investing $1,000 in a bank account and use an interest rate of 5% that is compounded annually, how long will it take to triple your money? You guys, come on, pay attention. So this is your A equals P times one plus R over N raised to the NT. Once again, I'll give you that so you don't have to remember it. Um, because it does not say compound continuously, it says compound annually. So remember, this is your P. Your R is going to be 0.05 annually. So N is one. How long will it take to triple? So 3,000 equals 1,000. One plus 0 0.05 over one times one to the T. Triple just means times three, right? We're not dumb. So when I simplify this, I have three equals, so I'm going to divide both sides by 1,000. So three is equal to 1.05 raised to the T power. So if I gave you this question previously, you would just have to keep plugging in random T's until you get the answer, right? Which is not fun. So what we're gonna to do today is teach you how to solve this equation if the exponent is up top. So the goal for today is to teach you how to solve an equation when your variable is up in the exponent world, up there, up top. So previously when we did these, when we did the solving here, that word problems with the graphing, I made sure the variable is down here. We're solving for money or A or P or something like that. Now I'm gonna give you the ability to solve for that exponent so you can solve these no matter what you're given. So case number one is you can find a common base. So there's some way, shape, or form that you can make these bases the same. So this is case number one. You can find a common base. So to do this, you can find a common base where you're working with an exponential on each side of the equation. So a big thing that I can tell you here is always go from big to small. Try not to go from small to big, go from big to small. So take your bigger number and try to make it smaller rather than trying to make the smaller number go big. Make the bigger number go smaller always helps you out. So what I mean by that is I have 64 and 16. So a common number that they both have in common is four, right? So I'm writing them as exponents. So I could use two, but I see four works because 64 is four to the third power, right? Do y'all see that? If I go too fast, yell at me. 16 is four to the second power. And then I still had that X, I still had that X plus one. I'm not gonna forget about those. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking those bases and I'm rewriting those with a common number. So I'm rewriting those with the common number of four. So I'm rewriting 64 as four to the third power. And then I'm rewriting 16 as four to the second power. From there, I have power of a power. So I multiply my exponent. So I have four to the three X power equals four to the two X plus two. So power of a power, your exponent rules from last week, you always multiply. So power of a power, you multiply. Now, since I have the same base, all I can do now is I can take this and this and set them equal to each other. And then solve for X, so minus two X. Ooh, the hiccups x equals two and you're good to go. There are no restrictions with these because you can raise it to any number you want to, positive, negative, fraction, non-fraction, decimal, it doesn't matter. So as long as you're not a log or a natural log, you're good to go. 
Now, just to show you on the side, if I brought it down to twos, 64 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So that's 2 to the 6th power. 16 is 2, 4, 8, 6, so 2 to the 4th power. So you can see here, 2 to the 6x equals 2 to the 4x plus 4. So 2x equals 4, so x is equal to 2. You still get the same answer. So if you brought it all the way down to 2, if that helps bring everything down to a 2 or a 3, you can. Um, but if a number there is in the middle, you're good to go. So let's look at this. So I got 3 and 9. So what would a good common base here be? 3. I always want to take the big to the small, OK? You can't rewrite the 3 to go to the nine. Does that make sense? I can't say the biggest thing people do is say three squared is nine and try to replace the three with the three squared. All you're doing there is squaring a number. You're not changing anything. Does that make sense? It's a little different way to think. So if you think going big to small, you're good to go. So three to the seven X minus three, three squared to the two X. So what I have here is seven X minus three is equal to four X. So negative three is equal to negative three X. So X is equal to one. And you're good to go. All right, does anybody have any questions on the first part? All right, so the second part is if you cannot find a common base. So we cannot find a common base. So I was trying to take attendance at the same time. So with this, when no common base exists, you first got to isolate the exponent. So we're going to get that exponential part by itself. And then we might be able to use the change of base formula for logs. We'll kind of take a look at this. Remember the change of base is log of A over B or natural log of A over natural log of B. You can do the same thing. They give you the same answers there, common ratios. So if you can't find a common base, we're gonna use this, the change of base stuff. So here, if I'm looking at example three, I have six to the X power equals 27. Six to the X power equals 27. So here, 27 is three squared, right? Can I rewrite six as a three as an exponent or a base? Sorry. No, nope, because it's three and then nine. So this can't work. So I want to convert it. So remember, it's your L here. So log base 6 of 27 is equal to x. And if your x is in the exponent, that allows you to make it equal. So now all you got to do is the change of base. So x is equal to log of 27 divided by the log of 6. That's horrible handwriting. And then go to your calculator, and you're going to get a decimal answer here for these. Um, or remember, if you do math up, up, and you go to A, you can type in whatever you want to. So X is about 1.84. So about 1.84. So that's the difference in this kind of type. So if you cannot find a common base, we're going to convert it and do our change of base. This is type number two. All right, so another simple, straightforward one. So I got my L. So log base five of 72 is equal to X. So it's log of 72 divided by the log of five. So five, 72, 2.66.
All right. So that's the basic. Let's start adding stuff to it and see what we get. Okay. Everybody still with me so far? This is a lot better than logs. Logs are easy once you figure it out, but they just look really weird and they get really long and it's a lot of writing. But once we get there, we'll be good. So here I have to isolate my exponential first. So I need to get this by itself before I can do anything. So first thing I'm gonna do is subtract eight. So six times e to the 0 0.025x equals 20 minus eight, which is 12. And I have to divide both sides by six. equals two. All right, can I make E into the same base? Not a chance, so I need to convert it. Which one do I use when I have E? I use the natural log. So remember here, if you have the natural log of base E, you don't really need to write it. So if I solve for X, I can divide by 0 0.025. So X here is equal to the natural log of two divided by 0 0.025, which is, I don't know. I did, it's point, is it just 0.25? Okay. So that's, thank you. 2.77, I typed in my calculator, right? Let me get rid of all these zeros. I don't know what's wrong with me. All right, let's change these back. That one's fine. Cool, thank you. All right. Take a second, try six and seven. I'm gonna pause the recording so it's not extra long. Um, try six and seven, see what you get. All right. So let's add that six over first. So eight to the three X plus two equals 11. So no way I can get those. I'm gonna rewrite them. So I got log base eight of 11 equals three X plus two. I can go ahead and do that. So log, math up a, log base eight of 11 is roughly 1.15. And then now I can just solve it. So I'm gonna minus two, so that gives me a negative 0.0. Or 0 0.847, divide that by three. So X is roughly negative 0 0.28 or 282, whatever you want to round it to. So once you get it to this section right here, go ahead and type that in the calculator so we can get the decimal, then it's easier to work for, to work with for you. All right, jumping over to seven. It won't let me, there we go. So I got an E, so I'm gonna be dealing with the natural log here. So let's move that two over. Because remember, this is what I wanna solve for. So three times E to the 0.5X equals three, because I'm gonna minus two. So E to the 0.5X is equal to one. So the natural log base E of one is equal to 0.5X. All right, the natural log, I don't need to hit second. Natural log of one is zero because any e to the zero power is one divided by 0. 0.5. And your x here is equal to zero. All right, so those are the more challenging ones. Those are the ones where they're going to be more in depth. Uh, the last one is going to be straight simplifying. You'll like these. 
Um, but first, does anybody have any questions on three through seven? All right. So here, canceling logs and exponentials. So to make things cancel, you'll need a log and an exponential with the same kind of base. Uh, these are the two forms that expression can look like in order to cancel. So here, what you can see here, if I have b raised to the log base b of x, if these are the same, they cancel and you just have x is equal to x. It's a nice property. Same thing, if I have log base b of b, these are the same thing, that's equal to one, those cancel, so you just have x is equal to x, which is nice. So what that means here, I'll just go straight down. I gotta do a little bit here. If I have five, five raised to the log base five, my answer here is going to be 71. Make some nice canceling easier. So if I have a base raised to the log with the same base, those cancel and then in a sense your X comes out front. All right, same thing over here. If I got 10, log has a natural base of 10, right? So since those are the same thing right here, my answer here is 6.7. Same thing with 11, since it's on this page, that's got a 10, log base 10 of 10. So my answer here is gonna equal seven X. And you can see here, if I rewrite this, We've already talked about the property where this comes out front, right? So I would have seven X times log base 10 of 10 and log base 10 of 10, if you type that in the calculator is one. So that's where this property comes in handy. Um, that's the long way to do it. <clears throat> but the other one, you just kind of have to know. Now, if I come over here to 10, there are two different ways to do this problem, just so I can show it to you. All right, the first way to use the property would be to rewrite this 16 so I get the same thing as two. So I can rewrite this as log base two 16, we already talked about it's two to the fourth power. So I can rewrite this as log base two of two to the four X power. Now I have that. So my answer here is going to be 4x. If you did the same thing we just talked about on example 11, if I'm down here, I have log base two of two to the four x power. Remember that can get kicked out front. So you just get four x as well because log base two of two is equal to one. Right. And then the same thing with 12, there's a bunch of different ways to do 12, just like that. Um, and I could pull this all back up, but the easiest thing to do is I see 27 and three. So the easiest thing to do is this. So I got log base three of three to the three X. So my answer is going to be three X. Easiest way to do is get them with the same base. Oh. All right, any of these that need to go back over, don't know what I'm talking about, I'm crazy. Yes, no, maybe. All right. Um. Well, you got a practice today. Once again, do the odds or do the evens. You can check them. These practices, I don't take up. They're just practice. Tomorrow, we're going to have a kind of solve day where we're going to do both logs and exponents. Um, so it won't be any new teaching, but I'll have the law or this thing, whatever this is, the Zoom up all day um, to answer all of your questions. So at least come in, sign up, or sign in early. Let me talk to you. And then I'll turn you loose to answer all your questions just like we did yesterday.
Cool. So have a wonderful rest of the day. Make sure you practice a little bit and I will see all of y'all tomorrow.